So we will follow with, I guess, three more uh, cases and the uh, remaining three one, uh, I will present uh, the solution in the website. But we had a question regarding the last case study of Gilles, so I share my window. Do you think posterior extra tidal spread in this case? So here is this third case. Then the question relies on the possible posterior extra tidal spread. Gilles, you, you, you are muted. Yeah. Okay. I'm unmuted. Because of macro, macro classification, we can not see the posterior wall like, yeah. totally. I don't think we can be sure of anything. I, I don't see any clear. Uh, I think that there are there is a posterior uh, shadow, and that uh, behind the posterior shadow we don't see clearly what's uh, what's happening. Okay. Okay, any question to this case? I don't see the chat now. Please check, Gil or Cosimo, whether there are any questions. No, no questions. Okay, so we will follow uh, with three more cases. So this was a 59-year-old man, uh, nodule which has been detected on screening, a thyroid. Uh, there were two nodules, one in the right lobe uh, with these dimensions and uh, in the left lobe with that one. Uh, I guess that these uh, um, diameters uh, uh, decide the shape of the nodule. So the middle is the depth of the nodule here and there. So both the widths and the lengths exceeded the depths in the nodule in the right lobe, while in the event of the uh, nodule in the left lobe, the depth was clearly higher than the lengths. So regarding one suspicious finding, we had an answer by measuring the nodules. So here I present the cases, not the cases, but the nodules. Okay, so here we are in the right lobe. And now turn to the nodule in the left lobe. Okay, so first focus on the nodule in the right lobe. Uh, two thirds of the colleagues uh, were on the opinion that the nodule is deeply hypochaic, one third that the nodule has microcalcification, and almost all uh, that the nodule has irregular lobulated margins. So back to the nodule in the right lobe. So deep hypochagency, two thirds microcalcification. One third labulated margins, almost everybody. Would anybody comment the case? So, regarding the echogenicity, I guess that the nodule has some parts which are more. Uh, with the uh, deeper, uh, not deeper, darker than the strap muscle, but the overall uh, 
uh, impression is that this module is not deeply hypercritic, in my opinion. Gilles, Cosimo? I agree. I will uh, uh, say, I will report this module as a high hypercritic. Okay. Mildly hypercritic too. Yes, okay. Uh, how to interpret these intramural ecogenic figures? I uh, uh, paused the video by chance. Most of them, ah, sorry, it's for the audience. Okay. So Let's one third of the, the colleagues, answers. 37 colleagues answered uh, the questionnaire, and one third stated that the nodule has microclassifications. The question is not whether it can have. The question is, uh, are these uh, unequivocal forms of microclassifications? Because according to the EU targets, uh, this is the only question in classifying a nodule. I don't, uh, don't, uh, don't see the chat uh, while I uh, playing the video. Please, Gilles um, or Cosimo. No, there are no insights from no insights, the audience. So, so. Okay. Um, yeah, there is one comment that uh, ah. tells us that they, these are not micro classifications. Ah, uh, yes, I see. From uh, the Berna Evranos. Okay. Sorry if I don't uh, pronounce it correctly. Active colleague. I thought uh, most of them are bacosistic artifacts. Can we exclude the possibility? So I tell you uh, the final histopathology, this yeah. proved to be a papillary cancer with numerous uh, psamova bodies. So, okay, I won't uh, regard uh, these as unequivocal forms, but uh, considering the final histopathology, some of them, for example, that one, uh, was, I guess, uh, a microclassification. These uh, echogenic lines, dorsal to tiny cystic uh, area, are, I guess, uh, backfall figures. And backfall figure has no relevance in the judgment on uh, the dignity of the nodule. So it is a difficult case. Uh, so, 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 so you're, what you're saying, Thomas, is that in the same nodule, we can have both microcystic cavities and true microclassifications. Yes, so yes. That's the problem important. is that papillary cancer frequently undergoes on cystic degeneration mm -hmm. and not large fields of cystic parts, but uh, tiny cystic areas. So it uh, can uh, make, uh, it can uh, worsen the situation, uh, can make more difficult uh, our judgment. Uh, okay, uh, I wondered that almost all colleagues stated that the nodule has uh, lobulated margins, but maybe uh, they are right, but this very high percentage of uh, judgment was a surprise. If we applied the rule of the uh, ETA guideline or the new guideline, I don't see uh, parts of the nodule where uh, there are two millimeter uh, protuberance. Uh, maybe on some parts it can have lobulations. I slow down the video. I think there is a thick halo that can be told about the margins. The, the, the shape is rather round on, on that plane, at least. But the way I would have described it in my report is that uh, I would have described it as a EU Tyrat spore uh, with a risk of malignancy in the high range, in the high part of the range of this category. So it occurs me what uh, Enrico Papini always said that he uh, uh, sees a picture and uh, uh, he uh, at the final decision he has an overall impression on the nodule uh, which decides whether to perform or not to perform 
cytology and uh, he does not deal too much with the individual characteristics. So I guess the, that the overall impression uh, is suspicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can debate whether the borders are irregular, whether these are microclassifications, or whether uh, there are deeply hypochaic parts, but uh, the overall impression is not, not, not calming. I guess. So this proved to be a papillary cancer. Now turn to the nodule in the left lobe. In slow motion. I tell you the answer of the colleagues. Uh, three fourths stated that the nodule is deeply hypochaic. Uh, around uh, forty percent stated that the nodule has microclassifications. Almost all that it has irregular margins. Mm -hmm. I guess that the latest is evident. So uh, this nodule uh, has clearly irregular margins. Yeah. So I stopped here. Here is a, I guess, speculation. Maybe it's a lobulation. So the overall impression is that uh, these margins are clearly uh, irregular. So back to the with the normal speed. What is your opinion about the presence of microclassification? I'm not sure about that they are true microclassifications. Possimo, <laughs> real? Uh, I would have said very probably. Okay. Yeah. So I guess that the chance that these figures are microclassification is clearly higher than the uh, case uh, of the opposite module. Mm -hmm. uh, the echogenicity, here I stop, here is the strap muscle. For example, this is the deepest part, and I guess the most part of the module is clearly darker than, uh, or at least has the same darkness as the strap muscle. So I guess that, uh, Three fourths of the colleagues who stated that this is a deeply hypoxic module uh, were right. I try to stop the video. Yes, uh, no. I yes. Okay, not not. So here is the capsule outside the module. Here is it continues. Uh, in the upper part, uh, it is discontinuous even at those parts of the lobe uh, where is non-nodular. So the uh, limitation of the capsule is that it is normally uh, uh, discontinuous. But uh, we, if we focus on the ventral part of the nodule, in most part, the capsule is lacking. So here. Yes, in that part. So uh, I guess this uh, raises the possibility of minor extratidal spread. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, uh, this proved to be also a papillary cancer without extratidal extension. So it uh, was, it were two foci, one in the right lobe and one in the left one. Okay, comments to this case? If not, I go uh, move forward. So this was a 39 year old woman. Uh, previously, uh, she underwent on FNA, which resulted in benign lesion. But considering the ultrasound pattern, the repeat FNA was suggested. 
she came to the follow up not first of all because the repeat FNA, but because of diffuse campaigns uh, suggesting thyroid dysfunction, but elaboration excluded uh, this uh, opportunity. So here is the lesion uh, with eight millimeter depth, seven lengths, eleven millimeter. Let's see this nodule. Okay, so it is a quite a long recording. Uh, I tell you the answer of the colleagues. Almost exactly two thirds of the colleagues were on the opinion that the nodule is deeply hypochoic, has microcalcifications, and has labulated margins. And here I ask our two today's speakers about the role of blurred borders in the diagnostic. Okay, blurred border is not encountered among suspicious findings, but uh, does it have any relevance? Sorry. Possimo? Real. What is your experience? So, uh, as for the ecogenicity, I will say that uh, this nodule is uh, uh, mild epechoic because we see some uh, uh, isoechoic, some uh, hypoechoic area. As uh, uh, Gilles pointed out before, if you have uh, only also one portion of the nodule hypoechoic, you may classify this nodule into as a mild hypoechoic. Uh, we can see uh, microcalcification, probably also through uh, microcalcification, because in some portion of the nodule, we see the posterior shadowing, so suggesting uh, for the presence of macrocalcification, but in other uh, area of the nodule, uh, we see also hyperechoic spot in the solid component. It, it seems uh, that it's not easy because uh, with the dynamic picture, it's not so always easy, but it seems that some uh, hyperechoic spot is in the solid component. Uh, and so, uh, as for the margin, they are ill defined, but by moving the probe over the nodules uh, on the wall, uh, they are irregular. Uh, so, uh, this seems uh, a nodule uh, uh, utilized at five. Are any comments in the chat section? Because I cannot uh, view both the Video and uh, you say that Amash that he had the final respiration uh, once. No, the final respiration was benign. Uh, at the time of the first final respiration, the nodule was uh, solid or or mixed. No, uh, it was performed not by myself, but according to the report, it was a solid nodule, so okay. uh, it was not a cystic one. Okay. So I tell you the final diagnosis, it was also a papillary cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the entire presentation uh, would favor subacute thyroiditis if the nodule won't have uh, these echogenic figures. So this yeah. uh, blurred borders, this presentation is very suspicious of a subacute thyroiditis and occasionally uh, we meet patients without clinical complaints. But in a subacute thyroiditis, uh, I never uh, saw uh, such uh, echogenic uh, figures within. So in, in my practice, I uh, rely uh, also on blur borders. Okay, it does not belong to the usual suspicious findings, but if a nodule has clearly uh, um, uh, ill-defined uh, borders in the event of uh, such patterns, I guess it can help uh, in some cases. I would like to say that in this nodule it's really relevant uh, to make a judgment by moving the probe because if you fix the probe mm -hmm. in some portion of the nodule it's all, all, all even difficult to recognize the nodule. By, by moving the probe from the bottom to the top uh, uh, you see at the end uh, that there is uh, some uh, uh, nodule and you see also it is irregular the borders are irregular even if uh, ill-defined okay yes uh, i agree, I agree with you. you you know the reason that we did not include blurred margins uh in our score uh was the fact uh that, what are you going to to teach people because here, I, I totally agree uh, this nodule is suspicious and I totally agree the margins are blurred. But what, why I find it suspicious is the ecogenicity, uh, the presence of the hyperechoic spots, and not only the blurred margins, but I think they are irregular too. Yeah. But if you try to put this criterion uh, you, you're going to include all the coalescent isoechoic nodules which have blurred margins because you cannot identify the margins in coalescent grouped nodules. And so the, the, the problem is that thyroids is also used uh, in a pedagogic way to teach people. So if you're trying to include a, a specific US feature, you, you have to take care not to induce uh, people uh, in error. So that's the difficulty. But in that case, of course, for blurred margins, I totally agree with you, are suspicious, Devash. But, but not every blurred margin is suspicious, as you see. Okay, I, I totally agree with you, so I won't say that it should be encountered among suspicious findings, but I guess that we have some other features, for example, uh, the vascular tick cannot be okay, uh, there is no vascular yeah. pattern which is uh, encountered among suspicious findings, but uh, we should not forget about some other features, uh, vascular presence or lack of halo, and, and I guess these blurred borders uh, can have some relevance. Mm. Are there any comments in the chat section? Um, it, it is written, can you define ecogenicity for these undefined blurred area? Ooh. So the ecogenicity of the undefined blurred area? It is yeah, maybe the because... margin of it, that, that's the meaning of the question, I suppose. The, the margin of the nodule is rather isoechoic, I suppose. That's blurred margins. Yes, this is the uh, uh, explanation why the margins are blurred, because it flows from a hypoechoic to an econormal part. So this part of the nodule uh, cannot be judged, but here in the center of the nodule, it is, I guess, uh, minimally moderately hypoechoic. But at the periphery or at the edges of the nodule, uh, in the event of a blurred nodule, uh, we cannot uh, s uh, clearly define where the nodule starts and where it ends. So, by the way, this proved to be a T1A cancer. So uh, it was not 
multifocal tumor. Okay, I show our last case for today. Clinical. Uh, so this uh, woman uh, was treated by myself for more than a decade. Uh, at the first examination, she had a lesion with that diameters, not with that four millimeter. Seven years later, uh, that diameters. And now at this present examination, uh, this was uh, that, and it was a clear increase in size. If we compare to the first examination, the largest diameter was four millimeter. Uh, seven years later, it uh, turned to be nine millimeter. So it is a clear increase. Uh, I did not perform aspiration cytology at the first uh, meeting. Now I show you the case. So this this is the nodule in question here, not that and not that. This is. Mm. So I share uh, with you the answers. Uh, Eighty-five percent of the colleagues were on the opinion that the nodule is deeply hypoclinic. So that one. One third have found microcalcifications and uh, around 75 percent of colleagues stated that the nodule has lobulated irregular margins <clears throat> so the most frequently found uh, suspicious finding was deep hypercogenicity so this nodule Okay. In certain sections, it is deeply hypoclinic. Uh, I guess it is uh, no debate that uh, in that, that section, the nodule is clearly darker uh, than any part of the strap mm -hmm. muscle. In other sections, uh, it is not uh, as evident. Correct. I jump to the third question, the nodule margins. Any comments from the audience? So first to nodule margins. You'll define an irregular margin. Yeah. Yes. Here we can see, I stop not at the appropriate uh, situation, but uh, I guess that this nodule clearly has uh, labulations or speculations. Uh, I start to try to pause the video. So, for example, at that part, uh, this is the upper part of the nodule, and in many other parts, I guess here, I go back a few seconds and please focus on that part of the nodule. Now, so I guess it is clearly irregular margins. The question is on the third uh, uh, feature, whether this nodule has or has not microcalcifications. And uh, I remind you on Gilles uh, lecture, he recited uh, an article which the, dealt with the distribution and the peripheral location of these echogenic spots. No peripheral. So only one third of the colleagues stated that the nodule has microcalcification. What is the opinion either from the audience or from Cosimo or Gilles? I would have said micro calcifications, peripheral distribution. Yes, I learned it from you that uh, this uh, distribution is important. Uh, and uh, although there are only scattered numbers of echogenic figures, quite not a large number, most 
are located at the periphery of the nodule. Yeah. Yeah, the audience agrees. Uh, if I judge by the uh, by the chat, yes. So the, we have one comment that says FNA is not indicated according to tirades. <laughs> How do you but, answer to that comment? <laughs> but we deal with a uh, human being. Uh, okay. She had four millimeter large nodule for seven years, and now nine millimeter uh, large. Okay, uh, it is very low chance that uh, the nodule spreads uh, extra thyroidal, so it is covered by parenchyma, but not by two millimeter large, as you stated, uh, uh, for several times. Uh, I performed aspiration cytology, and uh, it resulted in papillary cancer. Uh, I don't think that the patient uh, would have disadvantage. Uh, if she won't be operated, uh, if we uh, focus on the life expectancy. But if we focus on the possibility of uh, spreading uh, this tumor extrathyroidal, it could be worse than her life quality. So the Americans always, almost always focus on the life expectancy uh, and they extend uh, the size limit, there is suggestion for 15 millimeter in uh, very high, uh, very suspicious nodules. And uh, they have uh, right uh, because uh, it is extremely uh, rare that the uh, patient uh, has decreased life expectancy if we operate not in this nine millimeter, millimeter state. But I think that that is not the only uh, feature on which we uh, have to focus. But what are your uh, opinion, Gilles and Cosimo? Uh, here, in a way, we okay. have, uh, we have, here we have the proof that it is growing because uh, as you have the sequential US examinations yes. and it was uh, at the beginning four millimeters. So uh, I wouldn't wait for the uh, suppose a theoretical barrier of 10 or 11 millimeters as it has grown from four to nine. I don't know what the aim would be for, for waiting. So uh, if you want me to do something, I would measure it at 10. I'm sure I can find 10 millimeters. Uh, I agree. And actually, if you, you, you read the uh, guidelines uh, we wrote, we wrote that uh, a significant growth in this case is uh, one reason to perform uh, failure aspiration. Let's say that if you see this node for the first time, this is the baseline, uh, you may also wait uh, if you sweetly apply the guidelines. But as you have the history, as uh, Gilles pointed out, uh, there is one criterion to perform uh, failure aspiration. The criterion is the growth. We had a question. I, I uh, uh, saw it that whether uh, lobectomy or total thyroidectomy. What about the contralateral lobe? Uh... Yes, I, I think that uh, at the final part of the video we will see the left lobe. Although I focused on this this nodule. No lymph node extension, no, I suppose. Yeah, no. So there were no lymph nodes, and uh, there were several uh, similar uh, cystic areas similar to that, and that one in the left lobe, no one suspicious. Okay. So it is a very clever question whether to perform lobectomy or total thyroidectomy. What would you suggest? You know, in the absence of a suspicion uh, nodules on the contralateral lobe, uh, I will uh, suggest low back to me. Yeah. Uh, if in the future there will be uh, any uh, suspicion on the contralateral lobe, uh, uh, by coming back on the neck, uh, the surgeon has no issue because uh, uh, they didn't went on the contralateral con side, so there are not higher risk uh, in the surgical procedure. So I will say that uh, in the absence of suspicion nodules, I, I will suggest lobectomy in this case. Yeah. 
Same. No back to me for the same reason. Yeah. Most Hungarians experts uh, won't agree with you. There is a <laughs> tendency in Hungary uh, towards more aggressive uh, therapies. The same in Italy. Uh, we have a, a sort of a database uh, uh, monitoring the choices uh, of the endocrinologist and the surgeon. In these cases, uh, most of the people uh, suggest a total pterodectomy. We have uh, in, a, uh, in a period where the, the, the things are changing, and so it takes time uh, to, to change practice. Yes. I don't think that is a clear answer uh, to it because, uh, as I experienced, uh, the fear of the colleagues uh, uh, frequently uh, influences their decision. Uh, naturally, uh, in the interest uh, of the patients, but I think that if we would have much more data uh, on a safe follow-up. Uh, uh, 10 or 20 years later, uh, we won't be as aggressive as nowadays. Okay, I close this case and uh, I turn to the audience. Does anybody have questions regarding our today program? If not, thank you very much for uh, Cosimo Durant and for Gilles for their very nice presentations. And thank you very much for the patience of uh, the colleagues. It was quite a uh, uh, long uh, night for us, but hopefully we had some advantages from that. So I uh, remember you that on, uh, not Wednesday, on Sunday, uh, the will be presented on the website. Thank you very much and have a nice okay. Okay. evening. Thank you, Professor. Bye -bye, Thank, you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you.